Hello. Welcome to this episode of the J Situation Podcast. This is a very special episode. It's actually special for several reasons. First of all, I'm recording this on March 25th, 2020, in the midst of the global COVID-19 pandemic. I'm at home, isolated, <laughs> like many of you fortunate or unfortunate folks, uh, I've been working from home for my day job. Now, many of us are lucky enough to be able to do that. Uh, I'm one of the lucky ones. So, you know, I hope all you listeners out there and your loved ones are doing well in this crazy time. So, b- before this craziness started, over the past year, I've put forth significant effort into research, development, and testing of suppressed small arms. Rather than continue to wait on this announcement, I've made the decision to go forward and not delay improvement to the state of practice any longer than it's already been delayed. That brings me to the second reason why this episode is so special. Today, I'm excited and proud to announce the launch of the Silencer Sound Standard. So what is it? What is the Silencer Sound Standard? And Why should you be excited? I'll tell you why you should be excited. As a silencer consumer, how many times have you heard the phrase hearing safe, quote unquote? And how many times has the context in which you have heard it been meaningful? I'll answer that for you. Uh, Zero. (laughs) Zero times. Um, That's because... Anyone using that term in marketing of silencers doesn't know what it means. And, you know, that then means you don't know what it means. So for the past two decades, I think it's fair to say that gunshot noise has been the most misunderstood thing in the silencer industry, at least in the consumer silencer industry. So today that changes. Not just for you, but for the industry and all at once. If I tried uh, to convey to you how much work it took to get to this point, I'm I'm not sure it would truly be understood. Uh, And that's not because I don't think you're capable of understanding it. No, it's it's because I'm not sure if I'm capable of explaining it. So I'm going to try. I kind of have three main points to say about that. Uh, This took countless hours. Countless. Uh, If you tried to pay a professional engineer to do this, you'd be out of money. Um, I I know this because I'm one of them. Um, It's a good thing I didn't charge myself for my time because I would be broke. (laughs) The, The second thing to mention is constant industry pushback. Now... There are tons of industry parties that I would like to thank, actually, and I think a lot of them in the social media posts that you'll see about this. Um, And if you're in the industry and you're listening to this, you know who you are. Um, But for those of you who made it difficult, well, (laughs) let's just say some folks made this difficult. uh, There's a concerted effort in the industry to not do what I have done. Again, I will say that there are several folks in the industry that are actually excited about this and, and we are aligned with uh, you know, a common goal. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. Um, just know that there have been obstacles. The third thing I wanted to mention is the ups and downs. Um, technically, professionally, emotionally, and even personally, you know, personal relationships. Like, for example, my family, my girlfriend, bless her heart, for real, guys, you you guys, you guys don't even know how much of a saint she is. Like, imagine listening to your boyfriend talk about silencer and gunshot sound pretty much every day for, your, for a year. Like, if you're into guns, you're probably like, oh, that sounds cool, Jay. No, that's where you're wrong. <laughs> that is where you are wrong. So... 
Shout out to her. She not only puts up with me, but she keeps me going. Um, so, you know, the, the seesaw of product development, startup development, um, perseverance in the face of adversity when every sign tells you to stop is not something I can put into words. I, I don't want to belabor this point, you know, or turn this into a, wow, this was so hard. Look at me. I'm so cool, you know, <laughs> type of thing. Cause it's, it's not like that guys. But I do want you to understand that there's a reason nobody has done this before. Okay, so I went a little off, you know, on a tangent there. Let's get back on track. So the silencer sound standard, it's a standard testing and analytical methodology for consumers to get accurate firearm sound signature information from an unbiased, qualified, independent source. Pew Science, my company. So let's talk about what that means, what that is, and what it includes. Okay, so there's a lot of information that I wanna give you. Um, a lot of that information is better suited for reading and not listening to on a podcast. <laughs> for that reason, I have created a comprehensive website at pewscience.com. That's P-E-W science.com. That website now contains the silencer sound standard, which is the first of its kind, and it's composed of six sections. The first is an open letter to consumers and the silencer industry. The second is a methodology introduction to familiarize you with basic gunshot sound data. The third section touches on hearing effects and their incorporation into the standard. The fourth section highlights the test method uh, and the test results incorporated into the standard. And the fifth section is something even bigger. Um, I'm super excited about this. The fifth section presents the Pew Science suppression rating. The suppression rating is a single number, okay? Imagine using one number to compare every silencer on every host weapon to each other and getting the best real estimate of hearing safe, quote unquote, for your use case. That's the suppression rating. It's, it's the most accurate and comprehensive small arm sound signature rating available. And it's only from Pew Science. We are not going to stop until the rating is available for every silencer and weapon. Okay? And, and that's exciting because that leads us to the sixth and final section of the standard, which contains sound signature reviews. On that page, each review that is performed will be linked as it is released. Every review on that page is of a silencer and host weapon combination that is contained within the repository of test results from the fourth section of the standard and conducted in accordance with the methodology laid out in the standard. So, as you'll see on the website when you go there, when you read the standard, I have not done away with everything, okay? Uh, I haven't thrown the baby out with the bathwater, which is a euphemism that a lot of people don't like, but you know, I haven't done that. I haven't th thrown everything in the garbage. Room. So what I'm saying is I'm, I'm using existing nomenclature and terminology where appropriate. I'm improving upon existing methodology where possible and practical. And I'm introducing new methods and combining them with established and peer-reviewed science to improve the state of practice. Okay, so I realize I just said a lot of stuff. <laughs> to, to summarize, PewScience.com now has the Silence for Sound standard, which is six parts. And the sixth part contains the best, most comprehensive reviews of Silence for Sound signatures in existence. Each one gives you a suppression rating. 
and they are all free. That's right. You get the suppression rating on every released review by Pew Science for free. Cool, right? Yeah, I bet you didn't think, bet you didn't think I was gonna do that. But as not everything in this world is free, <laughs> Pew Science is no different. You, you can actually join Pew Science. It, it would be great if you did. If you, if you join, you get more. So what do you get? Well, you support the innovative efforts of Pew Science to further the state of practice. But along with that, as a member, you also get more data. So the public, although they get the suppression rating in every review, um, they only get the in-depth data that's measured at the weapon muzzle, okay? They still get the suppression rating, which takes into account everything, the muzzle, the ear, everything. But when you really drill down to the numbers on the reviews, the free ones do not show the complex data at the ear. But if you're a member, no matter which membership tier you belong to, you know, no matter which one you pick, you get access to very in-depth data measured at the ear too. So I, I mentioned membership tiers, uh, of which there are three. Um, the first is the basic tier. Uh, this costs around 25 cents a day, <laughs> a quarter a day. Um, you get the full reviews with that. You also, uh, you support further R&D of the standard and related technology. You know, you, you really help us out. The second tier is the professional tier. This costs around 30 cents a day, so it's a little more. Um, the, the folks in the professional tier will get the reviews, you know, the full reviews with the ear data, but also you guys get the opportunity to interact with me for questions and influence how test plans and things like that are developed for future testing. Um, again, you support further R&D and you help, um, you know, push the state of the art and further the related technology. The third tier, the third and final tier, because there's three, um, third tier is for manufacturers and dealers and distributors and other businesses. Um, I call this the advanced tier and it is $99.95 a month. This tier allows you to communicate with me about input into technology development, including the standard and PewSoft which we'll get into a little later. And you greatly support further R&D of the standard and related technology. If you're listening to this and you're a dealer or distributor or manufacturer, um, and you want to use the suppression rating to sell products, you can contact me to discuss licensing. Um, the, suppress the suppression rating is not for unlicensed use. So if you're, if you're interested in it though, um, and using it, then uh, you can use the request for a quotation form on the website and we'll be in touch pretty quickly. So, um, you know, I really appreciate your interest. So to summarize, there are three membership tiers. Uh, they all give you access to the full reviews with at the ear data and they all support Pew Science. The professional tier lets you interact with me for questions and future testing ideas and the advanced tier lets industry folks contribute to the state of practice by supporting Pew Science. Pretty straightforward, right guys? Okay. So, <laughs> again, I keep saying a lot of stuff. So I, I know you, you guys are gonna have questions and you probably have questions right now. So what I've done is I've created a frequently asked question page on the website. Um, I'll just go through these questions and answers now and then I'll save you the trouble of reading it. But if you want to refer to them, you know, if you, want to read them for some reason, um, you, you can, you can go to the website, you know, if you want to share the answers with others, things like that, they're going to be on the website. They're there. They're not going anywhere. Um, okay. So let's review them now. There's, I have seven questions. First question, what is the suppression rating? Okay. Okay. So picture this, imagine using one number, to compare every silencer on every host weapon to each other 
and getting the best estimate of quote unquote hearing safe for your use case. Okay, that, that's the suppression rating. It's the most accurate and comprehensive small arms sound signature rating available. And it's only from Pew Science. And we won't stop until the rating is available for every silencer and weapon. So let's, let me explain this more. Let, let's go through an example. Okay, example. Let's say you have a Silencer Co. Omega, pretty popular 30 caliber silencer, rifle silencer, um, and you put it on a nine inch 300 blackout AR-15. That's an AR-15 chambered in 300 blackout with a nine inch barrel. Let's say, I don't know, you have like an H2 buffer in it or something with a certain gas system. Pick your poison, okay? And let's say the ammunition you're gonna use, um, the 300 blackout ammunition you're gonna use with that is gonna be some subsonic things from Discrete Ballistics. You know, shout out to Discrete Ballistics. They make great subsonic hunting ammo, for example. Okay, so that's case one. Then let's look at like another case. Let's say you take your same silencer, your Silencer Co. Omega, that 30 cal silencer, you take it off that gun, and you put it on a Remington 700 bolt action 308 uh, rifle with an 18 inch barrel. And, and you're gonna use a different ammunition, of course, because it's 308. You're gonna use Federal Gold Medal Match. Just for instance, okay? Let's say you're, you know, you're not using that 300 blackout gun anymore. You're gonna use this Remington 700. You're gonna do some, do some target shooting. You're gonna do some hunting or something. Okay, so the first example, 300 blackout subsonic AR-15. Second example, supersonic 308 bolt action. Same silencer. Both of those examples get a rating, okay? And the rating gives you the dose reading for what use cases are hearing safe with each of those combos. So if you go to the website, the, suppress, the suppression rating chart will help you determine the level of possible discomfort to your unprotected ears for your desired use case. A suppressed weapon system with the highest rating lets you know you can go through like a case of ammo with comfortable unprotected ears, okay? As the rating drops, the comfort of your unprotected ears for a certain amount of shots drops too. With a lower rating, your suppressed weapon system might still be quiet, but not quiet enough to shoot more than 10 shots without possible discomfort, for example. So, you know, you got you to keep in mind, your ears care about how loud things are and also how often they hear those loud things. All right, so plainly stated, the higher the suppression rating, the quieter the system. The lower the rating, the louder the system. If you use different ammo or a different host weapon, your silencer might sound different. The, su the suppression rating lets you know how much louder or quieter it is. Okay, so that, that's what it's for. That's the suppression rating. So if you have any more questions about that, um, you can ask me in, in any way you, you like. Email me, you know, shoot, a, shoot me a DM on Instagram, whatever you want. Okay, question number two. Who are you? Who am I? <laughs> I you ever watch that movie Zoolander with Ben Stiller? That movie's so funny. He's like, you know, he's having like an existential crisis. So he goes out, you know, he's, he's getting old. He go, walks out to the street and he looks down in a puddle into his reflection. He's like, who am I? <laughs> it's like one of my favorite. Oh, it's so, it's so funny. Okay, who am I? I'm Jay. That's who I am. I am a freedom loving citizen of the United States. Okay. And I have a passion for science, firearms, the outdoors, um, I don't know, I'm a pretty easygoing guy. You know, you can learn more about professional qualifications on the About page on our website. So if you have this, this question, you want to know who I am, what, what, who Pew Science is, what, what we're doing here, just go ahead, you could go to the About page on the website, and, and all your questions may be answered. Third question. Why do this? <laughs> oh, man. Well, consumers have demanded this for years. Um, somebody had to do it, and no one else would, okay? 
Um, we, we'll go into that a little bit later. Um, the, you know, the, the silencer industry has lacked sufficient independent testing since its inception. So, you know, rather than just test silencers, we decided to fully contribute to the state of practice. You can read my open letter to the silencer industry in the introduction to the silencer sound standard on the website. Okay. Like the first part of the standard, it's literally a, a letter to you guys and the industry. So read that. We're here to innovate. Okay. That, that's what we're doing here, guys. We're not, we're not messing around. Okay. Fourth question. Why PewSoft? Hmm. Yeah, I, I announced um, I announced that last year. I don't know if you guys, a lot of you guys remember that. I wanted to let you guys know what I was doing. Um, Pew Science needed its own hardware and software due to nothing being available on the commercial market that meets the following requirements. Okay, we we needed a fast sample rate. I needed a million samples per second or greater, okay? I needed an unfiltered data stream. Um, what, what does that mean? It means that the system doesn't shift the waveforms in amplitude or in phase. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> it means that you get you get the data you measure and you know that it hasn't been altered more than it needs to be altered to measure it. Okay. The, for those of you who don't understand what I'm saying about, you know, filtering and, and shifting, it, it's okay. It, you don't need to understand that. All you need to know is that you, there aren't any systems that do that unless you do what I did, unless you make one yourself, okay? Trust me. <laughs> the next thing I needed was fast data storage. Um, I, I, I didn't want cumbersome data transfer after testing. Uh, you know, as soon as I, as soon as I fire the shot, I want the data instantly. I mean, instantly, for all intents and purposes, instantly stored and retrievable. It, it shouldn't be cumbersome. It should be, it should be packaged and, and ready to go. And uh, that's, that's what I did, okay? Um, I also wanted unlimited microphones. I wanted unlimited, unlimited sensor capability, okay? This is... I'm building the tool I need and I'm, I'm doing this huge undertaking. I don't want to be limited to, you know, I'm not guys, I'm not interested in, in like being limited to like three microphones, three microphones. Like I'm not, I'm not interested in that. That's, that's amateur hour guys. I'm not, I'm not interested in that. And then I also needed customizable software. You know, I, I'm using this as a tool. This is a tool. This is a tool for, for research and to create this standard for everybody. I need software that I can control, tweak, modify. I need to, to be able to add features as required. I need to be able to understand what the software is doing and, and make it work for me, make it work for us. Okay, so I needed, I needed customizable software. And finally, I, I needed something reliable. I. I needed something that, you know, I, I need to be able to use it in the field, but I needed it to have the requisite component redundancy so that if something failed or something went wrong, you know, I can, I can, I can fix it. Um, it if you've ever done um, any laboratory testing, uh, for example, and, and, and you don't understand that things go wrong and things break and then you, you haven't been testing long enough. It's, it's just the nature of the beast. And, and you just, you know, I needed something that could do all of these things. So to be clear here, guys, no commercially available systems 
offer any of the benefits I just talked about. Like nothing off the shelf, nothing you can buy. I promise. Because I would have, I would have, I would have got one. I would have had one, man. Like I would have, I would have bought one, and it would have saved me a lot of time and money. But no system offers all of those benefits. Well, actually, let me back up. No system offers any of those benefits, let alone all of them. And so, uh, Pew Science created PewSoft to meet these needs. Okay, by using this tool, in my opinion, a very innovative tool, and using real engineering knowledge and real experience to conduct real research and development, Pew Science is now leading the industry in small arm sound signature testing. You know, continuous R&D is it's part of our it's part of our mandate. It's part of the Pew Science mandate, and it, it hasn't stopped with the, with the creation of the Silencer Sound Standard, guys. Both PewSoft and the standard continue to evolve and will continue to define the cutting edge of this technology. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm super excited to be able to say something like that. This is, I, I mean this. Um, we're we're going to keep going. We're, just because, you know, I created this, I created PewSoft and started doing the standard, I'm not done. You know, we're, we're just getting started, and it's it's very exciting. Okay, next question. Well, there there are free sources of data, so wh why do you charge? Like, why does Pew Science charge for membership? You know, that's I'm, I, you know people ask this. Well, much of Pew Science data, uh, almost all of it, you know, a lot of it. Uh, is, is freely available on the website, pewscience.com. You know, it's subject to our terms of use, but it's it's there. Uh, the The development of Pew Science technology, uh, the testing, the reporting, uh, you know, the research. Gosh, the amount of research. If you, oh wow, if you only knew, <laughs> all these things are significant efforts. Um, you know the the type and quality, and the and the rigor of the data reporting you consume on our website, it's not present anywhere in the world outside professional engineering and scientific and academic arenas. Like I promise, like I know this. Uh, we operate in those arenas. You know, so those parties that, that do that stuff, they don't. They rarely test silencers. You know, and if they do, you're not going to see the data, guys, not, not for the consumer. And so, you know, when we started this, it became, oh man, well, it quickly became clear that nobody else is willing and able or able to put forth the effort that we have to make the science or sound standard a reality. You know, it, if they were, they would have done it by now. You know, m major industry third parties, by their own admissions to us, have abandoned such efforts before the conceptual phase, you know, even prior to making attempts. Um, okay, what is, well, let me back up. So for those of you who don't speak like engineer or designer, um, what does that mean? Uh, folks, I'm telling you, People gave up before they started. That, you know, when, for, okay, let me give you an example. So when, when presented with our methodology, when we presented this to folks, um, we were told that it's too difficult. You know, it, it, it's too hard, too hard to do. And, and, you know, the consumer just isn't smart enough to understand it. <laughs> we disagreed. Um, and for the record, we still disagree with that. I, I disagree. You know, Pew Science has risen to the challenge of doing this, and, and we have succeeded. We have succeeded from original concept all the way to final product, and we've done so independently. The, the standard is live, all right? So we're, we've done this. Um, so... 
You know, this, this isn't one of those I told you so moments. This is a, hey, like, we did this and we're here. Um, so to, to, to completely answer this question of, of why we charge for membership, membership fees contribute to the further development of everything you see on the website. It, it's the cutting edge of small arm sound research. Um, remember, you, you, you have to pay a $200 tax every time you purchase a silencer. So, the, I mean, the cost of Pew Science membership is pennies per day. You know, with the tax, I don't know what that tax is going to. I think it maybe hire, try to hire more ATF examiners. I'm not sure if that's true. But I do know that if the, 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 the Pew Science membership goes to, to furthering the state of practice. So that's just uh, some food for thought for you. Okay, number six. Question number six. What about data from other sources? Hmm. So Pew Science has relationships with many of the major science or manufacturers, okay? Um, and the distributors and, and the sales organizations. And we are not aware of any system, um, any data set, uh, or, or any, any collection of test results that comes close to meeting the requirements and the pedigree of the silencer sound standard. Excuse me. <clears throat> and, you know, we're, I, I'm not aware of anything that, that's going to meet it for the foreseeable future, really. I, I just don't see, I don't see anyone having anything that's going to compare. Um, you know, Pew Science is fully aware of all the commercial sound measurement systems. So, trust me, I, I know what you're thinking. No, we, we, we know who makes what, and we know what they do, and they don't meet our standards, okay? That, that's the end of the story. Um, so, given that, given that background information, um, data obtained from other sources, you know, like, uh, other, other than what we're showing you, other than our independent testing, should be carefully scrutinized by you, the consumer, um, but okay, and let's let me make sure I'm clear. This is not only due to technical concerns, you know, whether it's wrong or right, um, but also because of possible industry party bias or influence or control. I mean, it, it's the unfortunate reality, guys. There's you 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 got to know unless you're getting information from a truly independent source that doesn't sell a product doesn't doesn't sell silencers you oh man you just better be careful i'm telling you right now um numbers get pulled guys data gets pulled um we we, we don't we, we can't and and we won't do that so you know we're independent so given that I recognize that there are always exceptions to every rule. So, data may be submitted for consideration for use or possible incorporation into the Science or Sound Standard by contacting Pew Science. Um, the, the data must meet strict requirements. And, and to iterate what I just talked about, we are not aware of any other entity within the firearms industry capable of providing such data publicly. And, and this situation is not likely to change. Okay, so I realize, like I'm, I'm trying to answer this question about other data and I, I, I realize this sounds negative. <laughs> I'm not trying to be like that. I just, I urge you, so please, do not misconstrue my caution um, with cynicism or, or prejudice. Okay, I, there are several industry entities responsible for significant advancements in the NFA regulatory uh, logistics, logistics arenas, um, also in, in various areas of small arms R&D. And, you know, we, we welcome professional discourse regarding innovation from third parties. I mean, there, man, there's some crazy, awesome stuff that 
folks in the in the in the firearms in firearm industry and the silencer industry are doing. Absolutely, um, and and we we totally welcome professional discourse. Um, now, with regard to sound testing, well, we haven't seen anything. You know, that's 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 why I did this. So anyway, if if you if you want to talk, um, and and you want to have that professional discourse. That type of communication can be sent to tech at pewscience.com. You can email email that email address, T-E-C-H at pewscience.com. Okay. Number seven. This is this is the last question in the frequently asked questions repository, but uh, you know, I'm sure I'll get more. But anyway, number seven. This is and this is a pretty important one. How else can I support Pew Science? Well, your membership is greatly appreciated, and and it it supports ongoing R and D, ongoing research and development. You you can also spread the word, actually, which is equally important. It might even be more important. No, I say equally important. <laughs> um, what you can do is you can ask for the suppression rating for the products you purchase. So, ask the manufacturer, the dealer. Or the distributor, you know, whoever you're buying your silencer, ask them to show you the suppression rating, the Pew Science suppression rating, for the silencer you want to buy on the gun you want to use. And if they can't show you that rating, then tell them how they can. Tell them to contact Pew Science. I mean... If they want to get that rating, it's as easy as going to the website, filling out the form, and getting the test done. It, it, it's, really, it's really one of the simplest things a manufacturer, dealer, or distributor could do. It, it's, it, it's, it's not that expensive, and they could get it done. So if you want it, ask them. I mean, that, that's... It couldn't be more simple. I mean, I put in a lot of legwork to make this happen. The, the infrastructure is here now. All they have to do is, all they have to do is contact me. So it's there. So remember, membership is appreciated. Ask for the rating. And guys, I, I'm excited. I, I, I'm so excited about this together. We can push this industry forward, and, and we can do that one test at a time. We're going to do whatever it takes. So, again, if you have more questions, you can always email. You can email us at tech, tech at pewscience.com. Um, hit me up on Instagram, you know, comment on, uh, comment on the reviews. You can do that on the website, too. Comment on the podcasts. Uh, there's tons of ways to get a hold of me. Um yeah, it's, you know, it's, there's only, oh, there's almost too many ways. So I am glad, I'm so glad that this is finally released to the public. It feels so good to share this with all of you. I, it's kind of a little surreal. So let me, let me give you some more background. So, you know, I, it's funny. I had the idea to do this over a decade ago. So you may wonder, well, why did it take so long? You know, what, you, what were you waiting for? And okay, <laughs> that answer is a little long, you know, but okay, what are we? We're like 38, almost 40 minutes in. Okay, all right. If you have some time, some more time, I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why it took so long. The, the firearms industry is a little strange. Um, if you compare it to other technology industries, in in some ways, it's similar in, in that uh, the products and the development of those products are both actually very complex. You know, f firearms and firearm firearm product development is actually an extremely complex process. Um, a lot of the innovation that you see, um, like other industries, it, it's the result of government contracts. You know, how many things do we have because of the space program now? I mean, how many inventions came about because of that, right? Well, in this case, you've got military contracts, right? So in the firearms industry, it's the military. How many cool firearms do we have because of the military? 
uh, like almost all of them. <laughs> so, you know, um, you know, that's, so, so that's a good parallel, right? But okay. That's sort of where the similarities end. Um, in, in contrast with a lot of technologies, firearm technology is often dated, um, copied, not that other things aren't copied, but I mean, firearm technology is copied. Um, you know, it's highly regulated. That's becoming truer by the day. You guys know that. Highly regulated in distribution. Okay, that's an important distinction. And, you know, it's extremely popular, but with a low barrier of entry for those that find it interesting. You might think that's a positive, but no. See, because in other words, there's a low standard of professionalism to enter the industry due to a lack of professional or regulatory oversight for product design. You see where I'm going with that? So you get a little bit of oversight with ammunition, but with regard to the rest, the rest of the system, it's many times a free-for-all. There are no professional organizations or societies or licensing bodies that govern the development of small arms or related technologies. There really aren't, um, you know, related accessories, things like that. There aren't any. So, you know, one of the reasons for this is a double-edged sword. So don't think I'm dogging on the firearms industry right now that much. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to tell you something. It's a double-edged sword because those of us who value our freedoms don't want the U.S. government mandating firearm restrictions. Understand? It's possible that if more firearm design oversight occurred, it would be used as a backdoor to reduce the function and capability of small arms for civilian use. And that's unacceptable. So here we are. <laughs> and here we are. So why is that important? Well, if you have a large industry with a lower professional barrier of entry, and a weird combination of, you know, lower amount of oversight and old technology, you get slow movement and technology continues to stagnate. Um, there are some really smart folks in the firearms industry. I, I mean, I mean, just look at some of the stuff that's come out recently, just amazing stuff. But in my, in my opinion, um, the best and brightest are often not attracted to this industry because they, they see products being rehashed and they see a lack of opportunity to innovate and they see the firearm technology market as a bunch of uh, good old boys and gun guys, you know, who are stuck in the past. Okay, you know, I just want to say for the record that I'm a gun guy. <laughs> I am, I promise. <laughs> no, I really am. Um, so, you know, just so we're clear, but... You know, I, I don't want this to sound too harsh. I, I'm not meaning it like that, but let let's let me continue. Let, let's look at silencer testing. For the past decade, literally or longer, um, the de facto industry standard and the state of the art has been to use a military sound exposure testing document, which is actually pretty good, um, and an old analog impulsive noise meter, which is actually pretty good. Um, you know, it's not a bad thing, but the people who developed it and the people who consume the data from non-standardized testing or even testing that, you know, tries to be standardized with that, with that testing document, that those people have never had a conversation. If you are a silencer consumer, chances are you don't know anything about how sound testing is done why it's wrong, why it's right. You probably don't understand what a decibel is or what it means or what to do with that information. Um, and that's the reality, okay? Um, furthermore, you know, there have been very few industry members or companies or other entities to help with that because very few of them understand it you know, the, very few of them understand it either. Not only the consumers don't get it, the people in the industry aren't getting it. And the few that do, the few that do really get it, they don't or they haven't 
seen a need to help consumers understand it. So there have been less than five people that I know of who have made a significant effort to independently test suppress small arms and also present that information to the public in a central location. Like over, like over the past decade. I, I'm not talking about YouTube reviews. Like I'm not, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about people making real efforts, like really significant efforts. I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, the hundred thousand freaking YouTube reviewers. Um, you know, none of those people have really done this correctly and and they really haven't done it in a manner that's very useful or meaningful. Um, I am not knocking them. Trust me. I'm just saying, I'm just telling the truth. And um, it's just the reality. And that's just based on their capabilities and the technology to which they have access to, you know, to which they have access and their knowledge level. They're, they're putting forth great effort and they're, they're trying hard but they're, they're just not equipped. And, you know, a lot of them are stuck in the past, and that's part of the game. Um, you know, even the American Suppressor Association, the ASA, they haven't really contributed to the state of practice. You know, those guys, you know, more power to them. They're too busy fighting for our rights to continue to be able to own silencers. You know, it seems like all the organizations with the money to improve the state of practice, you know, and the influence, always end up fighting political battles. And, you know, I, I don't think the firearms industry is alone in that. I think that's just how it kind of happens. So that's so, okay, so that was a long answer, but th that's why it took so long. For the past 10 years, I kept thinking that if I talked to the right people and told them about the need and what consumers wanted, it would happen. I kept doing that and it just didn't happen. It never worked. So guess what guys, I did it myself. <laughs> I'm just crazy enough, you know. Um, I worked on this every day for over a year with my own blood and time and sweat and tears and money. I mean, I... I don't know what to say. I, I have given this my best shot. If it was going to be done, it's gonna, it was going to be done like this. And, I, and there was no other way. I, I think I've struck a balance between simple enough, quote unquote, you know, for most silencer consumers with a suppression rating, which is one number. I mean, how you can't get any more simple than one number. <laughs> So I think I've struck a balance between that being you know, simple and, and the technically correct enough crowd, you know, for the folks that want to make sure that the math makes sense. I, I think I've struck a good balance. Um, I think there's something for everyone in this. And I, I want to, oh, I really... I really hope you enjoy it. I really hope you you read this, and I I and I I encourage you. I encourage you to check it out. This is a labor of love. <laughs> I have a passion for silencers, firearms, and this industry. I I want it to grow, and improve. Go to the website, pewscience.com. If you like what I'm doing join. If not, hey, that's cool too. There's tons of free information there to read and learn from. Knock yourself out. In fact, most of, most of it's free. Most of the stuff on the website's free. Okay, so yeah, well, did it in under an hour. That's a lot. It's a lot of stuff. Um, well, I I can't believe I'm saying this, guys. I, I'm not going to get all sentimental on you, but I, oh, 
This is so great. Thank you so much. Thanks again. Thank you for listening. Thank you for going to the website. Thank you for believing in me and, and believing in Pew Science. All right. Stay safe out there. It's crazy times. It's like we're living in a movie. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.